I thought both of you guys were, were that lights out in the film that it deserved Oscar nominations. Uh, did you feel like that at the time? Oh man, I mean, that's so kind. And anyone who goes, I really had no un, you know, awareness of you and Drake and Josh. I just know you from this little indie you did with Ben Kingsley. I think for most of my life that you couldn't give me a higher compliment because that's all I wanted to be known for. But I, um, no, I mean, look, I, I was just so proud to be part of this thing that it seemed like people really dug and it was New York and it was hip hop and it was my favorite actor. I mean, I was literally starting at the top because Sir Ben is like, an idol of mine. So all those things considered, I couldn't believe it, but it's so funny you say the high times award because I inconveniently got sober like four months before that movie came out. And it's a pretty like <laughs> weed drug movie. And I was like, I really screwed this up. Like I could have been smoking some of the best weed on earth for free. What more, what more could a 21 year old ask for? But you know, I've never been great with timing. Dan, you would have loved this award show. There was a green carpet and then they had <laughs> trash trash cans i mean full trash cans of weed in the back and you could take as much as you wanted they gave you ziploc bags um they gave you uh like boxes to hide it in in your car mm. uh when you left and surprisingly enough because i think james franco won that year he showed up right. uh and then like the the award is an actual bong that you can smoke out of um which is uh, incredible and uh and i was pissed about it like for years and i went over to anna ferris's house and it was on her mantle. And I go, holy shit, you won the High Times Award. I was like, did you smoke out of it? And she was like, fuck yeah, I smoked out of it. And I was like, god damn it, dude. So you were sober before that? You didn't even get to smoke out of the award? I didn't get to, I don't know, I, did we win? Yeah, you won, I mean, I, you won. Damn it, I'm sure the director <laughs> probably has it. He's Fucking so selfish. Kingsley's got it, he's, he's cheaping it up. He's as high as shit, that's why we haven't seen him in a while. Oh yeah, well that became a running joke at the show. It was like, oh, is Kingsley gonna show up for this? Like, that would be hilarious. That would be, it would be amazing if Gandhi was like, you yeah. know, it's, it's nice to have won an Academy Award, but this, this is my uh, moment. I mean, yeah, because I think Franco won for Pineapple Express that year. He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, oh, it, I, and it was a blast. Like, that was probably one of the funnest times I've ever had. It's funny now, obviously, with how ubiquitous, like, you know, dispensaries are, especially in L.A., and, and I've been sober since then. But I will, like, I remember when it first became like, you can just go in. You don't need a recommendation from a shady doctor. You don't need to know five people. Like you can just walk in like it's a target. And I just was like, I got to see this because this was the dream that there could be an Apple store, but that sold weed instead. Mm. And uh, yeah. And of course, you know, corporate America just screwed it all up because I'm like, this seems very overpriced for not the best weed. Not that I'd know anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, um, in your book, what shocked me was I only knew you from the whackness. I did not know you weighed 297 pounds at one point in your life. And you referenced that a lot in your book. Um, the, the weights, especially the 297, because it gets brought up numerous times throughout the book. That's a big deal to you. And it's a big number, uh, as well as uh, obviously sobriety. Um, what was that like as an actor, that weight? Because you know, you talk about it uh, in the first couple of chapters uh, of as a kid, just going out and having confidence and being like the fat, funny kid. But as you get right. up, you, you grow up, that's not really that popular anymore. And obviously you want to fuck girls and everything else. Um, <laughs> but it seems like it still stayed with you. It certainly did. I mean, it was, I think it's because it's so public. It's funny. Like someone said to me on Twitter the other day, like way to make losing weight your entire personality. <laughs> I was like, ow. Um, but I think because it's so public and people marry themselves to the first image that they have of you, right? Like Steve Carell is one of our greatest actors, but he's always going to be Michael Scott to many mm. of us because it's so beloved. And that's not a bad thing. But for me, I was sort of walking this line of knowing that I was getting to do something so rare, so special, and that people would die to be able to do. But I was also introducing myself to the world in this body that – I really wasn't comfortable in. And, and I talk about it in the book. I'm like, when you become famous or at least a public person in that way, the world becomes like one small town where everyone kind of knows your name and is sweet to you and wants to give you a free coffee. But it also becomes like your drunk uncle at Thanksgiving who gets shit house and wants to tell you what they really think. Because suddenly like people would just randomly be like, God, you think you'll ever lose weight or 
man, you're so, you know, you're so big. Do you worry like that it's going to affect your health? And I'm like, I'm 16. I don't think I can have this conversation with you right now. Like it was open season to discuss how overweight I was. And I think that was really impactful at that age where you just want to kind of be typical. Yeah. And, you know, Drake and Josh in particular, like, even though I didn't see it, it was so famous and everybody else did that I knew the name of the show. I knew the people on the billboards and that's how big it was. I can't imagine going through that as a kid and people telling you how fat you are when you have this huge TV show where you're literally on TV all day long, just being a big fat person. And, you know, people are walking up to you in the street going, like, you think you'll be healthy? You think you're going to live? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Do you keep both your legs? You think you're going to hold on to that foot of yours? Um, I know. I certainly, it, it was a weird look in a weird way. I, I believe it was like my silver lining and, and in that people would say like, how have you been able to sort of, even though I surely had my like dumb, stupid teenage years where I, I could have lit my life on fire. Like I've sort of been able to stay away from all, from as many of the tropes of child actor turned adult actor as possible. And I say, like, I, I think the thing that saved me was that I was overweight at a time where I was becoming this public person. So I never became too impressed with myself because I was always holding myself back. I was always like protecting a part of me because I was too afraid to get too impressed with myself because I knew I was like, yeah, but I'm like the funny fat guy. Like I'm satisfying a role that people are used to. Like, it's not me. It's like a little bit of talent and girth. So it was a weird thing to walk. Were you able to get girls? Because I, I would imagine being famous, no. you were still able to get girls. No? Even though you were no. on Drake and Josh and all that shit, you weren't able to get girls? I mean, maybe. But if a girl ever asked me on a date, I'd be like, I would love to. But I'm, I'm actually spending the night alphabetizing my DVDs. And I made a commitment to them first. Mm. But <laughs> <laughs> is, that, what, is that autism? What is that? Maybe <laughs> it's probably a touch of autism. It could be somewhere on the spectrum. Yeah. But I... Uh, yeah, I just didn't I, – I, you're right. I certainly probably had opportunities to be thoroughly young and go to parties and, and, and meet girls, but I, I wasn't comfortable. That's wild. Um, yeah, I, I can imagine. I worked with uh, a bigger actor one time, and he was super famous. I'm not going to say who it is, but uh, anybody who's listened to the show over the years will definitely know. And he, <laughs> he was the same way. Like He was just like, dude, I, I feel uncomfortable hitting on girls because I know if they do want to be with me, it's probably for fame, but definitely not my looks. And this guy still struggles with that to this day. But then I'm sure we all know, like there, like growing up, there would be these kids who would like jump in the pool without a shirt on and they'd have like a belly or like, even when I was like 16, 17, like, and I literally would not enter a body of water unless there weren't people around for 50,000 feet in each direction. Um, but, like, there were guys who were totally unencumbered by being the big dude, right? Like, where mm -hmm. it's just not a thing for them. Yeah, I had a buddy in high school who was a uh, – he was huge. And, uh, but he was fucking hilarious. And he landed, like, the hottest girls on the planet. And it was – I mean, it was fucking <laughs> insane. And then that's when I realized. I was like, oh, man, it really can be about personality. Because uh, the way he carried himself, he didn't give a shit. And also, he didn't have any money, so he had this, like, broke-down station wagon. And I was like, dude, if you're fat – you have a, a broke down. It was a green, kind of like the one in the Alls, the uh, Griswold movie, uh, that, sure. that, that station wagon. I was like, if you can get girls that way, like anything is possible. Oh, man, that guy, that guy is a superpower. That's as comfortable as it gets. You're, yeah. you're crushing it in a station wagon and 75 pounds overweight. Good for him. Mm. So did you lose weight because of the wackness then? I, no, I lost weight. Before I did the wackness, I, I did this other movie called Mean Creek when I was 16, which is uh, this indie that won Sundance as well. And it basically is about these kids on, on this boat trip and basically things go awry and one of the kids dies, me. And, uh, and I basically played a bully in that movie. But it was the first time where I wasn't just like the token best friend or bully because of my size like one dimensional roles. Like this was this incredibly tragic, flawed character and you really felt for him. And after I did this part and the response was incredible, I was like, I'm not going to get this opportunity again. Like there weren't Seth Rogen. There wasn't Jonah Hill at that time. It was just fucking, if you were this guy, you did this thing, no questions asked. And I'm not as funny or as brilliant, even close to, like, I wasn't going to be John Candy. I wasn't going to be Chris Farley. I was just going to be like the dude. And, uh, and so inevitably, I just was like, I was ready to lose the weight. I was just so over it. And I knew if I wanted opportunity, I would have to do it. 
Yeah, because uh, again, it was such a a drastic switch in between those years, right? Uh, that it was just it's like about two years. Yeah, that's but that's a lot of weight to lose in two years. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was ready. It's amazing how quickly your body lets go of that weight when you're actually trying because it's like, I don't want to hold on to this. Like, but I, I did love when kids would, some kids would, would you know, come up to me scared at the mall because they had just watched an older episode of Drake and Josh and now I looked, you know, 100 pounds lighter. They're like, are you sick? <laughs> <laughs>